I've heard many Stephen Furtick sermons and his troubling interpretations, but this clip might be the worst. For those unfamiliar, Stephen Furtick is one of the fastest growing churches in the US. Of course, I use that word church loosely. With millions of followers, his influence is immense. Behind his charismatic personality and facade of success, there is a dangerous reality. He is a blatant false teacher. I don't use the word false teacher lightly. Biblically, he is unsaved and leading many people astray for his own gain. Under the guise of Christianity, he preaches a self-help message, promoting health, wealth, and success as God's promise for your life. Not only does he present a distorted view of Christ and the gospel, but he endorses and promotes other false teachers such as T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen, Joyce Meyer, Mike Todd, and the alike. False teachers often have red flags if you know where to look. They come across as motivational speakers rather than sound biblical preachers. Get that off you! That's not your name! That's not your station! That's not your end! They rarely address crucial doctrines such as hell, judgment, and sin. You know, you've been criticized for church light. Yeah, that's right. For a cotton candy yeah. message. Do you feel like you're cheating people by not telling them about the hell part? The no, because, part? no, I really don't because it's a different approach. Instead, they twist scripture out of context, distorting its original meaning in order to please people and for their own gain. While Christians and especially pastors are called to a life of humility and modesty, these false teachers are seen frequently flaunting designer clothing worth thousands of dollars. But that's not all. In this clip, I address two heretical and disturbing statements that strike at the very character of God, Jesus Christ, and the gospel. First, he makes the statement that that God broke the law for love. And second, he says that God sent his son in the likeness of sinful man. Because love will take you way further than the law ever could. I'll prove it to you. Let's say your child is in a horrible accident. Let's say they bust their head wide open on the monkey bars. And they fall off the monkey bars and monkey bars are like... 30 feet high. I'm making this an extreme example. And they fall down and they bust their head wide open. And you scoop them up and put them in the car to get them to the emergency room. And on the way to the emergency room, every sign you see says, uh, speed limit. How much attention do you pay to the numbers beneath the speed limit in that moment? Those numbers mean nothing to you. Why? Because somebody that you love is in trouble. And in that moment, any parent will break the law for the sake of love. Any human parent will break the law for the sake of love. And what will really turn your heart to God is not when you hear his laws, which were given for our good, by the way, but they were powerless because there wasn't enough leverage in our action to keep the law. So what God did when he sent his son, and this is why we get excited in church, and this is why tears fill our eyes when we think about Jesus, and this is why the gospel is still good news in the world today, because God broke the law for love. I said to every sinner, God broke the law for love. False teachers always distort the word. Their teachings sound somewhat right and almost biblical, but only tickle people's ears as in the end times, people will not endure sound teaching. Remember that God creates and Satan counterfeits. Fertig says God broke the law for love. First, if you know anything about God and his holiness, you wouldn't dare blaspheme his name by saying he broke his own moral law. God upholds his perfect law in his sovereignty out of his perfect character. Theologically, God did not break the law for love, God fulfilled the law out of love. What does this mean? When Jesus was here on earth, he lived a perfect sinless life. Where we failed to live up to God's standard, Jesus Christ obeyed them perfectly. He loved God with all his heart, soul, strength, and mind, and he loved his neighbor. And now his perfect righteousness is imputed to us, to those who trust in him by faith alone. It is by his perfect record we are saved and not our own. This brings us to Stephen Furtick's next controversial point. God's sent his son in the likeness of sinful man. This is a blatant mockery of who Jesus Christ truly is. I mean that he scooped you up in his arms. I mean that he's carrying you in his grace. 
I mean that what the law was powerless to do and that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending His Son in the likeness of a sinful man. The perfect sinless life of Jesus is a crucial gospel-centered doctrine. Jesus Christ was born by miracle of the Holy Spirit through the virgin birth. This is important because if he was born from human parents, he would inherit the sin of Adam and Eve. However, because he was born of supernatural birth, his record is clean, spotless, perfect. And he upholds this perfect record by fulfilling God's law in love to save sinners like you and me. God fulfilled the law out of love and did not come in the likeness of sin, but rather he bore the sins and hells of guilty sinners so that now all those who trust in him can have eternal life, so that our guilt and our shame can be taken away forever. Stephen Furtick teaches a false gospel, distorts the character of God, and presents a Jesus foreign to the Bible. He may be charismatic, but he is unqualified and a deceiver. So what do respectable Bible teachers say about him? Pastor John MacArthur in a Q&A is asked what he thinks. Uh, um, Stephen Furtick. <sighs> unqualified. Pastor MacArthur is 100% right that Stephen Furtick is unqualified. He isn't just unqualified, but he needs to hear the true gospel, repent of his wicked ways of idolatry, greed, and manipulation, and turn to Jesus Christ for his only hope in this life. Pastor John MacArthur points out that mega churches like this have become juvenilized, reflecting worldly ways rather than a holy church. Superficial understanding of scripture produces superficial worship. Shallowness produces superficial worship. And that's what we have. I've been reading a book called The Juvenilization of the Church. An interesting book, The Juvenilization of the Church. Or The Juvenilization of Christianity, actually is the title. Juvenilization of Christianity. You're living in a time when junior church has taken over. Now this is called the Drenchinator. You see it? The Drenchinator. And the drenchinator operates by. <laughs> I'm praying about whether to follow through on this illustration. And I hear the Lord say, yes! I heard him say, go for it! I, I grew up... Uh in an era when uh, we had what was called junior church. When we were in the fourth grade and fifth grade, we went to junior church. Well, we now have junior church in the auditorium. That's right. It's, it's designed for elementary kids or junior hires. You know, the preacher gets his clothes from Abercrombie and Fitch, tries to look as much like a teeny bopper rock star as he can. Pastors dress like teenagers, are immature, and don't treat the Word of God with a deep reverence, holiness, and seriousness that God deserves. This juvenile approach is a part of the broader trend among megachurch pastors who prioritize style and entertainment over sound doctrine. And this may be a shocking statement for some people, but people don't go to hell for sin. This is a new wave of megachurch pastors who think they can enter the narrow gate by broad gate living. They're leading many people to a sign that says heaven when it actually says hell. They will be shocked on judgment day to hear Jesus' terrifying words, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of lawlessness. My prayer is that Stephen Furtick, his staff, his church members, and all those unsaved will repent and turn to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. In the description, I will leave a list of 10 faithful pastors that I would highly recommend recommend you listen to today. They will teach God's word as it says without compromise and they'll present you a full picture of the gospel of Jesus Christ that brings God all the glory and praise and honor. May the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. God bless. Mm -hmm.